All right, so we want to now move on with the discussions here in studio. We want to get started with the first, um, rather the second interview here in studio. The previous one was a recorded version. So right now we want to go to the segment that is all about women who are at the forefront bringing change in whatever capacity that they are able. And today we'll be looking at women in leadership. And with us in studio, we have Matilda Sakwa, the Director General of the National Youth Service. Karibu sana. Good to have you. The uniform looks lovely. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So if you have any questions in regards to, you know, <coughs> what has to do with NYS, how leadership has been for her so far, send them in using the hashtag once again. That is hashtag Good Morning Kenya on Twitter. Um, are you on Twitter? Uh, no. No? No. All right. So direct them using the hashtag Good Morning Kenya or tag me at Jane Momboy and, of course, our official station handle. Now, um, let's just quickly get started with the discussion. Now, you know... Um, when you were approached for this position as you know the director general of nys we did see uh, ps margaret kobia say that you know many had been approached and they had refused this um office but you know knowing you accepted this position knowing all too well the challenges that are lie ahead first of all where were you when you were called for this offer thank you um first of all i want to say uh, margaret kobia is a cs oh cs yes, cs thank apologies you. yeah uh, when I was called, I was at Windsor mm -hmm. Hotel. We were attending a workshop on HIV and AIDS mm -hmm. for all regional commissioners yeah. and county commissioners. So the call comes in from my then PS, yeah. uh, Karanja Kibicho, Dr. Karanja Kibicho. Then he tells me, uh, um, Matilda, uh, we want to give you this thing. We are thinking of giving you this thing. I said, which thing? <laughs> then he say national service. Then I say, hey. I don't want. <laughs> I don't you want. You did not want it at the beginning. I didn't want it, and um, yeah, I told him. He asked me why don't you want it. I said, you know, I fear because of the past what has been happening in yeah. national service. So I said, no, 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 I fear, I fear. So he asked me one question: Do you want to fear, or do you want to progress in your career? Yeah. That's a tough question, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, of course, I want to progress in my career. But uh, not at the National Youth Service. Mm. Uh, then he asked me again, would you, would you want to progress in your, your career? Then I realized then it is a position that um, I have to make up my mind very fast. Mm -hmm. So I said, yes, I want it. I'll take it. You'll take it. But then he told me, yeah. um, the, the, there were so many other people, they're considering. Mm. So after the workshop, I decided to go to his office just to tell me, let me know exactly what all these things are all about, because mm -hmm. it was a shock. It was a shock, so uh, I talked to him. He told me, okay, um, His Excellency the President is looking for somebody who can take the leadership at the National Youth Service. And um, they have uh, two, three names. So That were tabled, yours included? Yes, but yeah. I didn't know which other names. Uh -huh. But... Um, they're going to do their background check, mm -hmm. and uh, if mine is approved, then they'll call me in a week's time. Mm -hmm. And for sure, my, in a week's time, I was called. Mm -hmm. Then I was told, uh, well, you're going to lead the National Youth Service to ensure that you steer it from now onwards. Is this a position you had imagined yourself, you know, having at some point in life? Was it ever in the picture? No, not National Youth Service, no. Even in a dream somewhere. Not even a dream. It was, I mean, it was a shock. Yeah. National Youth Service, you know, when these issues used to happen on the TV and so on, I used to just look at it and say, wow, what's happening at the National Youth Service? Yeah. I mean, it, was, it didn't bother me because I had nothing to do with the National Youth Service anyway. At all. At all, because yeah. I was in uh, National Government Administrative Officers. Mm -hmm. So the best thing I would have expected is either to be a regional commissioner mm -hmm. or at best a PS, because I had even applied for a position of a PS, but not National Youth Service, no. Director no. General. And more so at that particular time. Yeah. No. So that was no way in the no way, picture. No way, no so way. when it came, it came as a proper surprise. It was a shock, not surprise, shock and surprise. Yes. Wow. Yeah. You know, I can imagine, you know, it's not something that you had planned for. And then, you know, looking at the history of NYS in yes. the recent past, Correct. it hadn't been very good. It, it was hadn't. very tainted with, you know, grand corruption scandals. But mm -hmm. you still chose to take this, you know, um, take this position mm -hmm. on head on. You know what happened is that after I talked to the PS, Dr. Yeah. Karanja Kabicho, he told me that they were looking for an administrator. So there are the two names also that they are going to consider. What I did is that um, I have a brother who, 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 likes, who loves praying. So I told him um, I've been approached 
and uh, I might be heading to National Youth Service. He told me, no, don't take. I told him, I didn't tell you to tell me. I told you, I'm telling you so that you pray for me. So if it's a good position, it's a position that can give honor to myself and the family yeah. and the whole country, then I take it. I didn't tell you to, to say no. I was not asking ask for, for your advice. opinion. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, okay, of course, uh, definitely we prayed over it. Yeah. And uh, later on, I also told my family because I didn't want it to be a shock mm. to them after the week that uh, the peers had talked about. Yeah. So, well, when I was, uh, it, it was pronounced, uh, I was already good in it and uh, I had settled my mind that maybe that's my fate. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. So even as you came in in your acting capacity, yes. when it was fully confirmed, you were now reassured of this role that you had taken on. Yes, yes, yes. Because um, the reason why I was saying no is because I didn't know what I was going into. Yeah. I didn't know. Completely, I didn't know. Because, um, you know, there are things you watch on the TV, you read in the papers, but uh, you didn't actually know what is in the National Youth Service, what is ailing it, mm. why we have all this grand corruption and all those issues. Mm -hmm. But um, after one week, I think I settled in. I said, uh, let me push myself. I also want to see whether I can manage mm -hmm. to do something above what I expect myself to do. Yes. Yeah. Now, you know, just looking back at, you know, when NYS was, you know, institution, instituted, <coughs> it was meant to be an organization to train the youth for national, important national matters. Yes. Do you think along the way, even as even in the 10 months that you had been <coughs> in office, do you think that NYS might, might have, you know, steered or veered off its path with all these um, sightings that have been happening to it. You know, interestingly enough, um, the National Youth Service remained intact. Mm -hmm. The programs remained intact. It if didn't lose its it purpose. It didn't lose its purpose. Um, the programs carried on the way they were supposed to do. We were doing paramilitary training. Mm -hmm. It was still on. And in fact, at that time, we had about 16,800 recruits at the Gilgil. Yeah. And then we also had about um, uh, 45,000 across the 22 units you have. Mm -hmm. So the programs were running on well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the only problem in the National Youth Service then was on the procurement issues, mm -hmm. but not on the program and not on the commandate yeah. of the National Youth Service. Yeah, so it was on and it's still on up to now. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, so now when you have Ume Akubali, Ume digest the whole idea that you have been appointed in acting capacity in the mm -hmm. first place. Mm -hmm. um, you now get to the office. What was your immediate reaction? Um, what did you actually find on ground? When I walked into the office, first of all, I'm, um, I, wa I want to say that um, I was cancelled. Mm -hmm. Really, really. I mean, it's not a position you walk into. You just like wake you, up and yeah, take all. Yeah, because, you know, as you, I mean, I was an administrator as a DO and so on. You know what to do. You know when you walk into a new office, even if you went to a new place, you know what to do. And everybody you know expected you exactly. to know that? But now um, um, I was cancelled. Uh, I want to say uh, the PS, Karanja Kibich actually talked to me at length yeah. and yeah. told me, don't fear. Do uh, just go there and do your work. Yeah. And then when she, he took me to Professor Kobia, the mm -hmm. CS, she also talked to me at length and gave me the courage. So when I went into that office, the first thing was to find out what really is the issue. Um, I found the staff who remained, you know, re you realize that majority, the top leadership had been arrested, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, the top leadership. Uh, that includes the accountants, the, the procurement, the, um, the, the DG, of course. Uh, so the rest of the people who are there were traumatized. Yeah? yeah, and therefore they were not talking. People were not talking. It was like um, it's like you're going to a funeral parlor where you find people mourning. Mm. I mean, it was that bad. It was that. Bad. It was that bad because uh, of fear. You know, fear because they don't know who next. Also, the fear of authority because you know you might have done something <laughs> and you didn't know you were doing it, but somebody might have said you. Maybe, up. yeah. So yeah. it was like fear, and therefore I had to make everybody relax so that I can actually know what it is mm -hmm. I'm going into. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to say that the f people who are there opened up and at least took me through what NYC is, what it's doing, what is the, the common date of the National Youth Service. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were able to now uh, settle down to work. Mm -hmm. And because uh, the problem of National Youth Service was procurement yeah, and accounts, yeah. those are the areas now I started focusing on. So I just wanted to understand who, who is there in the procurement, 
why was it there and you know, so we found out and uh, through the many many reports that had been done in fact there are so many other reports that had been done earlier the mm -hmm. nys1 yeah that even and anti-corruption had done a, a report presidents had done a report what were the weaknesses the systematic weaknesses mm -hmm. in the national Justice service so it was uh, it gave me a basis of what to do when I walk in. Mm. And uh, we realized that um, the procurement, the systems, the procedures were not there. They were in total mess. They were in total, total mess. Records as well. The records were as well. So that is what I found. Was that a surprise for you, given that all well, that was happening in the media? Uh, in or terms it made of, sense? Yeah, it made sense. It made sense. It made sense because um, not having strong systems mm. and procedures not following procedures would be, you know, is death sentence to anybody. It was the downfall of NYS. It's to the, the downfall for NYS yeah. and also the DG and the PSO was there mm -hmm. because um, as a DG, you assume sometimes that the people below you are doing the right thing. Mm. And yet they were not doing the right thing. Honestly, the people who are supposed to do their work never did their work. Mm -hmm. And therefore that's why we had that kind of loophole loophole in terms of um, even the procedures they follow in terms of procurement. Mm. Yeah, simple things. Now, you just mentioned, you know, the fact that, you know, in as much as you are in that leadership capacity, sometimes mm. you don't really know what people mm. are doing, mm. your juniors. Mm. Now, is this one of the things that you actually were after, you know, just building a relationship with your juniors, mm. just being more in touch mm. with them, mm. as opposed to your predecessors? I mean, they were two in a span of three years. I don't know. I won't speak for them. I don't know what they were doing. Yeah. But because I realized that the systems were not working and your downfall could be that small person there. The disjointed, the disjointed sense of, yeah. you know, unit. There wasn't exactly. that sense of unity in the organization. So that, that, that made me now become alive to the fact that I have to know what everybody's doing. Yeah. You know? You know they're around. You find out in the procurement system, has this standard been done properly? Has this one been done properly? And when I came in, uh, what we did very fast uh, through the uh, Professor Kobia mm -hmm. at the CS is that um, all suppliers were... We, we got new suppliers, mm -hmm. yeah, so that we know exactly who the, we are dealing with, you know, and uh, that really helps us a lot mm -hmm. because you you know the issues you know in the media and so on they're talking about um, uh, ghost uh, suppliers, letter, ghost supplier, yes. one to one letter high and so on. So we had to do that first yeah. to ensure that now we we get our own we enlist our own suppliers. Number two, something that was very important for us is to to clean the, the all the the department mm -hmm. in terms of procurement and accounts we had to get new people to come in uh, to strengthen that um, uh, unit, especially in finance and accounts. Mm -hmm. So we got new officers mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, we can work with. Uh, we also uh, did something called framework contract. You know, framework contract it gives you two years to deal with somebody mm -hmm. or companies yeah. uh, or specific, uh, specific companies yeah, for that two, for year the two years. So yeah. it was easy for us, for example, if you want something to be done, you can get. Because uh, what was coming out very, very openly was that um, there were so many programs running mm -hmm. and there's so much that we needed to be done. Mm -hmm. And therefore, sometimes you needed to get items mm -hmm. or goods on a very short notice. You yeah. know? So uh, therefore, you end up now calling anybody to come and uh, you procure from everybody and anybody. Who is able to deliver. Which was wrong, yeah. which was not right. And therefore, in, the, in that, you can get a loophole. Mm -hmm. You know, the staff working under you can see, okay, today you call Matilda, tomorrow I'm going to call Modoni, you know, those kind of things. So we had to put the systems mm -hmm. to ensure that we know whom we are dealing with. Okay. We know who runs those uh, um, supplier, the suppliers, the company, and the directors, mm -hmm. so that we know exactly whom we are dealing with. Where the problem <coughs> lies. So... So th those are some of the issues we have put. Uh, the the the, the prog um, that's what we have put in place so that we ensure you know who we are dealing with. Mm -hmm. And then we also we, we we want to know who wants those items. You must have a requisition. Mm -hmm. You know that's something that was very interesting because what I found out is that anybody could requisition anything. Yeah. So if it's for example uniform, yeah, it has to be the quartermaster to write. I need this number of pair of uniforms or material so that nobody just wakes up and says you bring this you bring this you bring this no you have to find out first of all find out whether you have that budget whether you actually need that particular item you want mm -hmm. because what we realize is that some of the items that were in store were never needed they were not necessary they were not necessary. but they were approved at the end of the day they were approved but uh, you know sometimes if you don't you are not strict in what comes in then therefore because maybe I have um, 
say boots in the store. Mm. I would want to bring to national youth service. So somebody will just tell you, you know, boots. So say bring. You gonna be a shara to. You gonna be a shara, yeah. So that one we must be very strict about. Mm -hmm. We order things that we need. It must be requisitioned. We have to know who is that requisitioning, and when those goods come, we have to inspect them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those committees must be strong and ma making sure that you are doing the right thing, mm. value for money. Are you bringing the goods at the right price, for example? Mm. All those things, you know, because um, you realize that sometimes um, some of the things that were there is that somebody brings you a pen uh, worth 20 shillings and she will tell you 100 shillings, I mean, really. So those are the things that we had to look at mm -hmm. and uh, work very, very closely with the professor. Uh, and the peers, mm. uh, the new peers who came in, uh, Dr. Wino, we made sure that we all did all those things so that we are very sure that we are doing the right thing. Now, as you were putting in place this system, because, you know, you uh, once said that, you know, you know it's a tough assignment that is ahead and mm -hmm. you're equal to this task, you will study the system mm -hmm. and in so doing, mm -hmm. you did so when you mm -hmm. found all these loopholes mm -hmm. and you decided to put in a new system. Now, was there resistance from within to this new whole new way of running things that you were in trying to introduce into the organization? Um, I wouldn't say there's a resistance mm -hmm. because they know that's what's supposed to happen. That is the procedure. That's the government procedure. Yeah. Everybody knows the procedure. It's only that. But um, contrary to what most of them were used yes, to. Yes, exactly. Uh, of course, there will be resistance, but uh, they'll have to do the, the, the. They have to do it. Eventually, they fall they, in line. They have to fall in line because they know they must do it. Mm -hmm. There's no shortcut about it. And um, those ones who cannot um, to the line, then we can say, "Why you go and work somewhere else?" But uh, Overall, people are following the procedures, but I'm not sleeping easy mm. because anything can still happen. Anything can happen. Yes, because as I told you, maybe the director, the director general, the PSS, and so on, somebody was doing something down there. Yeah, you know, sometimes we we work with, um, we 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 have faith. We believe in people mm. that you'll do the right thing, and those people who believe in are not doing the right thing. They end up so I usually say, up for the fall. yeah. So you, I usually say, I'm the only one who's sitting there. <laughs> yeah, you have to look and say, am I doing the right thing? They try. The people will still try. Remember, yeah. this, uh, this uh, people are human beings, yeah. and a human being uh, does not sleep. If he was come only kwa zoya kuchovia asali, eh? Kidogo, kidogo. Yeah, bado anata kuchovia. Because, well, let me tell you the reason why these things happen sometimes. Mm. Let me just, maybe it is because um, in Kenya here and our society, they glorify wealth. Yes? So it does not matter whether you were employed the other day as a corporal in National Youth Service or a, as a, a accounts assistant mm -hmm. or as a supplies assistant. The following day you want to drive a VX simply because you saw, for example, Matilda driving a VX. You don't even want to ask, how did that person get that thing? Mm. People, people don't want to be patient anymore. So that is why we have a lot of corruption. And I want to say, it's not only in National Youth Service. Maybe the National Youth Service, because it was... It's just one of yes, them that actually was found I, out. Yes, but I believe in most of these units we have, there are people who try to do those monkey businesses. Mm. They are. Because people want to be rich. People want to overnight. Drive. They don't overnight. want to put in the work. Yeah, people want and the to. Time. Yes, the people want to go and buy uh, flats in apartments in Westlands and Hallingham. You know, people are always in a hurry. They are not patient, and therefore, if they get an opportunity, they'll do anything. That's why I'm saying you don't sleep easy. You have to find out what everybody's doing. Mm. Yeah. So that's you know, e tamaya mali. Tamaya tama mali. Tamaya, it's been the undoing of. Some but you know, of the society. That's what that we, we like. Seen. We like people who drive and they'll glorify you. Let me tell you, when I was appointed, uh, a DG, somebody was asking me, I don't want to say where I stay. And I said, why not? You're now a director general. So, <laughs> does it, that, that does not stop me from being Matilda. Secondly, you know, even if you are going to get more salary, why do you want to use more salary, I mean that money, to pay a, a house in Lovington or uh, whatever? To add all Runda. the expenses. Why? What for? Where I'm staying is a, a, a stable place, is a noble place. Is a place where anybody would stay anyway, and we have so many people staying on that area. Yeah? We have magistrates, judges, and so on. So what makes me special? Because I'm a DG, anyways. Mm -hmm. That means that I have to steal money to go and pay to that rent. Up. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, the problem we also have is to keep up uh, appearances. That now I stay in Runda, you know. Uh, now I can drive VX, you know. In the and social media age social that we're media, living in. Exactly. So, so that is the problem. And mostly in our... In, in our offices, we must be very careful. Mm. Because overnight, somebody be 
honestly, if you look at somebody's salary, you know you cannot even afford a Toyota. A support is driving, driving a Pajero, a BM, a Mercedes. Questions. And, and what kind of business do you have? And maybe you've worked for only five years, yeah. honestly. Five years, and you're driving all that? So that is a problem. And therefore, they'll always have um, the, the work overdrive, just to, to beat the system, mm. yeah? To make sure that they can get something. And you were once quoted saying, you know, what you are getting is enough for you. What you're being paid is enough. You know, you don't feel the need to steal more. Yes. That still remains that still remains. for you. That still remains. I tell you what, this is not the first time I'm in a place where I get money, a lot of money. Uh, once I was uh, the head of its control unit, Office mm -hmm. of the President. And that time it was, it, was, um, it was a program run by the World Bank. Yeah. And therefore we could do proposals. We get a lot of money. I, uh, that time we were getting like, and I became the head of the AIDS control unit, we were getting like 15 million. Then it was a lot of money, 2001, mm -hmm. 2002. 15 million, I'm running it for like one week, one week or one month, depending on what I say, that uh, maybe I need more money. They still give me, if I wanted to steal, I would have stolen still. Mm -hmm. So what is it that now I come to National Youth Service, and, and by the way, there's no money in National Youth Service. The money that is there, the billions you hear, are for something. It's budgeted for. It's it. budgeted for. Is budgeted for. So when you go there and people think, and that is the problem with the society and the chief right now. Mm -hmm. When I was appointed to go to National Service, I thought, no, I have a lot of money. Billions that have been money. talked about. I'm telling you so many people who are asking for harambees. People are asking me, now you do this, buy me this, do this. And then I'm wondering, what the hell? What is all this? You, you know? But that's the society we're living that in That is the day. society we live in. And um, I think the society also pushes us to do things that are not supposed to be done. Yeah. Because now if I have to uh, keep appearances, that means I have to steal. No, me, I just still don't have money. Yeah, like me or not, I mean, that's your own problem. I cannot, you know, like thousands and thousands of people. And somebody, and I know so many people, by the way. Yeah. From the time I was a DO up to where I am, I know thousands and thousands of people. But because they know you now, they start telling you, please, I have this problem, I have this problem, I have this problem. Or oh, somebody's sick, so I need to take somebody to school. Mm -hmm. I just tell them I don't have money. You know, they, they really get offended. But what How they don't know... How can a director general exactly. not afford to give me just 100,000? Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, they don't know that that salary is enough for me and myself and my family. I don't have any other money to give others. Yeah. So sometimes when you give somebody 5,000, they look at you like, what the hell? I say, you don't know what I'm going through also. Mm -hmm. So it is that society. The society is very, very unforgiving mm. for those people in, uh, in positions that don't give up money. And society doesn't but forget But something well. I like is that, um, it's, uh, but you know, I usually say I live for myself. Mm. I don't live for society. Mm. So if I, if I can assist somebody, I'll be happy to assist you. But I'm not going to assist you so, so that I look good. In your eyes. I can only look good in the eyes of the Lord. And I know myself. I go to church, I give my money. But I'll not give you simply because I want praises from you. After mm. all, the position I'm holding is not a political office. Mm. I don't want you to elect me next time. I don't want. Yeah. And that's, that has been, I know the good thing is that I've been in administration. Mm, before. I, before. So yeah. we get such, such kind of uh, requests and so on. Yeah. So I, I think I developed uh, a thick skin. And I don't feel guilty when I tell you no, because it's true I don't have the money. Yeah, yeah it's true. With a career spanning 29 years, yeah, exactly. you have definitely yes, yes. grown the house. Yeah, but for uh, it. I think uh, the, gov the system, the society also should realize that people working in government, they don't have that kind of money people think. They're not as rich as... No, it's not as rich. They show the society because, uh, they are? Simply because you see me with uh, VX coming in, government vehicle, with Mercedes now. That is not my money, that's government money. Yeah. But they think that is yours. You so see, that's the problem. Yeah, and uh, that's why, uh, but besides that, mostly people are just becoming greedy for nothing. Yeah. Greedy for nothing. Uh, and more so, people who know these systems. Eh? They know how to manipulate they the systems. They manipulate the systems. Yeah. Yes, they do. They do. All right. Yeah. Now, um, just uh, to take you just a bit back, you had mentioned the whole issue of, you know, you had to get rid of the old suppliers that were there, mm. vet new ones. Mm. Did you get rid of all the suppliers that were there or you retained some? Uh, I would say that, we, you know, if you meet the criteria, you'll still get uh, jobs, you know? And what was the vetting process like? No, they just look at your, um, uh, you know, for you to be a supplier, you have to bring in, you are PIN, you are bank account, yeah. you are directorship if you uh, is a company, mm -hmm. not those kind of things. Eh? Mm. Um, but that does not mean that I'll give you a job. 
you know because by the way when we announced for the new suppliers thousands and thousands and thousands applied applied for them uh, yes and um the best thing is that uh, once you if now you're going to give your job then we can fa do further business further check up oh, check, check background, background check, check. Yeah. okay is this one who who am i dealing with is this able to bring in the the goods but the good thing is that we don't have those millions we used to have in the national service yeah. and therefore anything maybe the, the 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 highest we have done right now is a uh, about 70 million highest we have ever paid mm -hmm. because of the uniform you know that's yeah. bulky but the rest of the things are like uh, one million, two million. I mean, that's easy to do. And secondly, what you have done mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, there is a, a bit of, um, of, of, uh, of uh, transparency and so on, we have decentralized monies. Because mm, that was also the other big yes. issue that yes. you found in that, place. That, that every procurement was being done at the headquarter. That somebody does um, procurement and I pay in the headquarter. What we have done that all the 23 units we have given the AIEs. Mm -hmm. So you manage your own to money. To authorize uh -huh. the expenses on expenses, their end. Yeah, so they, when they want to buy food, they buy from that side. They know the quality, the quantity they have. Want. They know the number of uh, servicemen, service women you have. So they buy and pay from that end. So it is the st stress from the headquarter. Has that even been able to just even maybe even cut down on the expenses that were being cut as opposed to before when you were, everything was centralized? Yes, it, it cuts. Because now you don't have to carry things from here. You're carrying rice to Gilgil, for God's sake, no. So, you know, if it's Gilgil, for example, they buy their own things there, they pay from there. And then it's also easy to monitor, yeah. you know. You, ca you can easily fi uh, find out, I gave you 100 million for food. What did you do with that food? What did you do with that money? Then you say, I paid so and so and so. So you say, paid so and so. Uh, what did he bring? He brought potatoes. Uh, let's go back to the store. Did the potatoes come to the store? Was it issued? You know, this kind of thing. So we also strengthen the store mm. so that when things go into the store, even coming, getting them out, you need to show us that you have, you know, there's also food register. We have all those registers in place. And records and are records up to date. Up to date. Up to date. And the one thing is that you are training and retraining mm. uh, everybody, manning all those, um, because the store, the procurement process, the weakest link. Yes. Weakest link in the national service. The other programs are doing well, very well. Yeah. It's only that issue of procurement that was the biggest problem. Mm. Okay. Now, um, when you were still fresh in the office, you know, the president made a statement about, you know, how he was warning, especially mm. leaders of parastatals, you know, you will mm. no longer be using this excuse of, oh, somebody called and said, you know, do this, do this, and you did that on their behalf. Mm -hmm. Now, this time around, you will have to take responsibility for whatever actions that you make mm -hmm. while in office, you will not abuse the power of office. Has that happened to you since you assumed office? You know, somebody from above, mm -hmm. a higher position, just calling you mm -hmm. to ask you to do mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. that is not well in line with you know mm, matters concerning mm, the nation mm, even in the mm. first place to try and use the power of the office over you uh, to be honest no none no? nobody has called me yeah so um it's interesting because i'm waiting for somebody to call because uh, i'll have a few questions for them <laughs> <laughs> yeah if they told me to do something that is not in line with government or try to influence your to influence decision me, i will ask him a few questions mm -hmm. because at the end of the day i'm the one to go in not him at the end of the day, I'm the one who is answerable, not him. And therefore, okay, what what can happen, a situation that can happen, is somebody calling you to assist on certain things. Mm -hmm. If it's true that I need to assist, then I have to look at how do I assist you in the best way. But I'll not get out of my way to do things that are not right, you know? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I'll have to do those things. With, and as the president said, if somebody tells you the president said, do this and this, you have to come to check, his office is there, mm -hmm. we have to write to the head of public service and find out this project, is it true, the president said, and if it's true, you know, again, uh, you go back to Treasury to fund that particular project. Okay. So I, I don't, th I'm not seeing that happening. And should anyone there, they know that? No, not somebody there, but I'll ask him a few questions. A few her, questions. A few questions, why would you want me to do that? Mm -hmm. No, honestly, why would you want me to do that? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, you know, you've just mentioned some of the biggest loopholes that were there in NYS mm. procurement. And now the whole question of IFMIS. Mm. Now, just as it is as of now, you know, it has been one of the biggest loopholes. You know, mm. somebody can easily access other people's passwords, do transactions on their behalf. That's why you have this whole case of, you know, ghost operations, ghost workers in the organization. As it is, do you think it needs to be looked to be reviewed to change a few things here and there? 
Yeah, I'll answer this. Uh, I don't think anybody can hack your if miss unless you gave out your number mm -hmm. or your 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 password. It's not that easy. You sure? I'm very sure. Mm -hmm. Um, because that means you have colluded along the line for an item to be paid. There's uh, a requisition person who is requisitioning it. Mm -hmm. There's somebody who is confirming it. There's somebody, who, and then at the end of the day, there's somebody uh, now saying pay. You get it? It's a chain. Yeah, yeah. Miss, it's a chain. Mm -hmm. It's not just one person. Mm -hmm. So how come that it's only my, um, uh, whatever, what is it called, my um, pin or my password that is hacked? That means these other people down there do bad things and then they hack yours. But they only hack if they maybe you would have given them at one time or another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as it is right as now, it it's is, not susceptible it to um, any uh, as security it is, cases. It might, it might, but... Um, uh, you know, when I, any transaction happens, mm -hmm. it, it, there's, um, there's a way that uh, there's a, a message that comes to you. Mm. So you'll quickly know. Because any transaction that happens, you are able to see through your email and so on. You are able to see. I can only, always see what is happening on the, on the, on the, on the wall. So uh, hacking of that, I'm not so sure. But if this must be strengthened so that um, we can also do e-procurement, uh, which is being done, and I want to say that uh, one of the moves that we are making uh, is that um, we want, you know, National Youth Service has now gone parastatal. Mm -hmm. We now we are going to be we are pri uh, we are private. I mean, we are autonomous, and uh, this is going to be the first parastatal that is going to use IFMIS, because now we want to link all our units to make sure that anything that is happening in the news is also done through IFMIS. You see. And um, I would also want to say at this juncture that when I came in, Professor Kovia, the CS, ensured that we went parastatal and there's a new council. So mm -hmm. the council also oversights us. So what we do is that we must make sure we do the systems and make sure that they're correct. So the if miss is part of it mm -hmm. to strengthen. Because if the if miss is bad, then we would not be talking about if miss, you see. But if miss is uh, a system that can make you uh, trace very easily mm -hmm. uh, the path. The path. Yeah, and like the paperwork, you know, paper you can always uh, introduce certain things. Mm. You can, but if it's in the if miss, you are able to see, and whatever is happening on the other side, I'm able to see what is happening. So if miss is a, a good um, system, uh, integrated uh, finance uh, uh, system that uh, can link everybody and know exactly what is. So when I'm sitting in Nairobi, I can mm -hmm. know what is happening in Balambala. Mm -hmm. it, it's possible that uh, somebody hacks, but that hacking. But you must be very smart. Mm -hmm. But definitely smart. more needs to be done to just strengthen yes, the system. Yes, more needs that to be. That you agree. Yes, and not just in NYS, in the, in All the entire. All government systems, yes. yeah. Yes, and I, I, I'm very sure <coughs> that uh, because people have talked about IFMIS and the weaknesses of IFMIS, I'm very sure Trisha is looking at all those things mm -hmm. to make, make sure that they're strengthened. Because that's one thing that is good for us, all of us, mm -hmm. because it's something that you can go back and say this is what happened and this is the story, the history about this payment, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Now, you know, we're living in a time where there's so much complaint about youth unemployment mm -hmm. and we are seeing uh, NYS uh, uh, graduating year in and mm -hmm. year out. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens to this lot when they graduate? Where do they go next? Um, uh, after vocational training, most of the times, uh, before 2013, Mm -hmm. We used to have a very small number, about 4,000, and they were able. We were able to. National Service was able to absorb all of them. Yeah. But now, with the big numbers, after restructuring, the president uh, saw so many youths uh, suffering and said that the National Service brings in more youth. Uh, what happens is that most of them, when they graduate, they have to look for jobs outside. Mm -hmm. But I want to assure you that uh, majority, majority, just a few, majority of uh, the people graduating from NYS, especially in those. Sk skills that um, are really needed get jobs almost mm. immediately. The skill-based areas. Yes. Yeah. The only problem we might have is that uh, we look for jobs, but uh, the skills that are offered in the National Service can assist, can make you start your own business. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are looking forward to, so that we don't look for white-collar jobs, we don't look for being employed. Mm -hmm. We are looking for uh, um, a way that these youths can employ themselves. And yeah. therefore, uh, as we come in and with the with the council and with the CS and the PS, we are looking at a situation whereby all these youths who are graduating can also be given even things like youth fund. You know, youth mm -hmm. fund 
is something that assists the youth. Now you have a skill, you can go. Then second, we also bring in more uh, partners, and there are so many people partners who really want to work with the National Youth Service, like um, Centum, uh, like um, there are so many uh, construction companies. They come and take our plumbers, our electricians. So there's always a, a way that they go out, but it has not been systematic. Mm -hmm. So what we're saying is that now we want to come up with a hub, whereby if if we have like uh, 200, 300 a skill in uh, plumbing, we know where to take them so that we can document. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And we also uh, get employers ready to get them when they get out. So it's true that um, the, the, we have so many youths without employment, but remember the ones coming out of initial youth service has a skill. Mm -hmm. So that they're better positioned yeah, to look for employment. Yeah, they're better positioned to, employ, uh, to, to get employment, and most of them are, they get employment very fast because of their discipline. Uh, the training that uh, they have gone through, and I want to tell you that um, the many courses that are very, very popular, like catering, when they finish, they mm. get jobs. You go to so many hotels, it's only, it's only that you never ask them whether they come from NYS. You go to a place, when I'm dressed like this, they tell you, you know, madam, I was in NYS, and then you feel proud. Mm -hmm. uh, so many people get employed from catering, so many people get employed from uh, plumbing, um, especially the, the construction industry. Mm -hmm they get jobs almost like And those like who go through the paramilitary training, the, some of them are absorbed by KDF. KDF, police. Right now we have yeah. uh, quite a number uh, uh, in, in, in police, the call center. Yeah. Let me tell you something about uh, the police. We are partnering very, very closely. When the it happened, mm -hmm. uh, um, National Youth Service was also part of, part of the call center. And the uh, people didn't know that because they are helping, they are working with the police. So you can see as that one. as one. You see, so they are able to be absorbed in those kind of places. You see them in airport, you see them in KICC, you know, doing security work and so on. Mm -hmm. So what we are saying is that we want to expand that space mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, our graduates get employed very easily uh, in every area that they are in. Because it's true, the youth don't have jobs, but because they don't have skills. Mm -hmm. The good thing, the National Youth Service wants to have skills. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a question of just expanding that um, that space yeah. to ensure that the employers know we are there, you can get the best. The best of any skill that we train from National Youth Service. And they're well yes. qualified. Yeah, they're well qualified. Yeah. They're b above all, they're disciplined. Above all, they're patriotic, you know, and they are enduring. Because the training we take them through, they can endure any situation. Mm -hmm any situation. Okay. Yes. All right. Mm. Now, just going back to the NYS as an organization. Now, when we saw NYS 1, NYS 2, you know, there's so much blame game going on, mm -hmm. pointing a finger, no one wanting to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. Now, that clearly showed a sense of, you know, a disjointed unit. There mm -hmm. is no sense of unity in that organization. In the 10 months that you have been in office, have you tried to, you know, just bring all the different departments together to just learn to work as one, as opposed to, you know, watching your own back, regardless of what happens mm -hmm. to the other department? Yeah, I do, I do that very often. Um, I'm not sure about the past, but what I want to say is that uh, you must work as a unit anyway. But you know, as a public, that is what yes. we saw. Yes. You know, once yes. you're blaming mm. each other mm -hmm. with, from within, yeah. that clearly shows mm. you do not work as one. Yeah, but you know, that needs leadership. Yeah. Yeah, that means you have to be a leader, to lead everybody. You don't have to have those disjointed um, uh, things. You are leading one organization as mm -hmm. a leader, mm -hmm. you know. And therefore, we have to work together to make sure that you have a, a strong team to deliver as one. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see a situation where I will start blaming any department, will blame the other, because uh, when something happens like that, that means people don't know their roles and responsibilities and their duties. Mm -hmm. Because if it's accounts, you know what you're supposed to do. If it's procurement, you know what to do. If it's management, we know what we're supposed to do. And therefore, I work towards bringing everybody together through uh, meetings so that we sit down, we agree, what is, are you doing, what are you doing, what is your problem? Why are we not moving? What are the bottlenecks? What are your challenges? Mm -hmm. So that we can, you know, try to to resolve them as, as a unit. Uh, when you have that blame, when something happens in NYS now, if it were ever to happen, we will not blame anybody. We will blame ourselves. Mm. Because that means, what we have said is that we are doing everything as a team. I would want to know what you are doing. I would want to know, accountant should know what procurement is doing. Procurement should know what paramilitary department is doing, mm. but a media training should know what, you know, uh, national service is doing, so that we are like one, it's a way but one. You be each other's accountability Exactly, partners. because, for example, um, if you're an accountant, you're accountant for what? 
your accountant for the National Service. Mm -hmm. If you are in a department called a National Service, eh, you are you, where the youths go for national duty, you are doing it on behalf of the National Service. If you are um, in any department, youth empowerment program, you are doing it on behalf of the National Service. So why would you blame each other? Mm -hmm. So any money that come out is because it's going to do a certain activity. Any tender you're doing is you're going, you're doing it to do a certain activity. Because you, you are not working on your own. Mm. You cannot say that uh, you want to purchase food for who? It must be for the National Service. Mm. So why is that blame game coming in? Mm -hmm. And uh, we, 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 we say that we also have to put people on performance contract. We want to look at what, what is it you're doing. So that uh, you don't come to the office to do your own work. Every position is performance based. Performance based. Yeah. Because we want to see the results. Of every, and that result, um, ca uh, 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 that result uh, uh, informs mm -hmm. the bigger picture of mm -hmm. the national service. And decisions moving and decisions forward. Move forward. Okay. And therefore we have to have meetings all the time. We, I also insist on uh, different units also having to sit together and, uh, you know, just uh, drawing uh, their programs. Mm -hmm. And as a DG, I also want to know what every section is doing. Okay. So that you are not sitting there and doing nothing. But we are doing, good, doing something that is not relevant to the national service. And therefore, that, that unity must be there, unity mm. of purpose, and to deliver as one. Okay. Because remember, when we sit there at the national service, the, the government, the, the people of Kenya are watching us, mm. and they want us to deliver. So we cannot afford to have those kind of disjointed units. And of course, you know, as humans, you yeah. always pay more attention to what is not, what is the wrong thing that is being done yeah, that, as that's opposed the, to the that's right the thing. That's the most unfortunate thing. And that is the expectation that most people are just waiting to see. Even right now, they're still waiting. People yeah. are really waiting. And it's so unfortunate that um, instead of encouraging people, you know, it's also good to be encouraged. Mm. If you're doing the right thing, it's also good to be encouraged. But you'll see in social media negative things and so on and so forth. Then you wonder, what is all this? Eh? Uh, people should, cannot, people don't take time to look at the good mm. in people. That's natural. It's people human always, nature. Yeah, people always are good in looking at the bad. Mm -hmm. At the bad. Mm. They will never want to. Because of the history of national service, everybody will say, ah, that one, that woman. Because people are negative. Oh, yeah. I, I think uh, human beings find it easy to be negative than positive. Mm. That's an unfortunate bit in this world. And all over, not just Kenya. Yeah, we tend yeah. to remember the yeah. wrongs that yeah. were done, mm -hmm. especially to you personally. It's true, but then again, you project them to other people who mm -hmm. are not part and parcel of the bad. Yeah. You see, uh, because to me, if you encourage uh, somebody, that person works even extra hard. Yes, we are here to be paid salaries, but sometimes it's also good to be told, yeah, you're doing a good you're job. You're doing a good job. Yeah, I mean, it's human nature also to be told uh, you are doing good. It's human nature to be told you're beautiful, you're handsome. Mm. It's also a human nature to be told that you are wrong. It's good. So in as much as yeah. NYS has had a not so pretty mm -hmm. recent history, there's still so much potential that lies there's in the organization. There's a lot of potential in the national service, a lot. Yeah. Let me tell you, there's a lot of potential in the national service. If you may, uh, right now, mm. what we are focusing on is to ensure that the national service is self-sufficient. Mm. Yeah? Uh, remember that the national youth service is now a parastatal. The national service has been restructured. One of the biggest things that we are moving into is commercialization mm -hmm. to make sure that we can produce uh, money enough to run that entire. So we are looking at agriculture mm -hmm. in a big way. In fact, we are looking at the four big agenda. Mm -hmm. We are going to contribute very, very um, uh, strongly in the sense that we have land, a lot of land. We have, uh, we have machinery. We have personnel, that is, means labor. Mm -hmm. So what else do we need? We want to see that we are going to feed the country mm -hmm. with this land, we are working with it. Uh, we also have um, goodwill from the president, from the government. And then why can't we do that? And then we also produce skills, mm -hmm. yeah? That can go into the, man, uh, to the housing. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the next uh, agenda, agenda four yeah. for the president, affordable housing. We do that. We work with the with the government so that we pro produce the skills that are needed in that um, in that sector and the manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And remember, we are also big in now uniforms. We are making uniforms for yeah. the disciplined services and even other people who are not disciplined but who wear uniforms in government. So that is good. Mm? Mm -hmm. That's good enough. Mm. Mm. Mm.
So at the end of the day, you know, just looking to be a self-sustained organization yes, will yes. go a long way we'll even in helping the nation. Exactly, exactly. And we want to make sure that we are self-sustaining and also in do commercialization yeah. and also make sure that the youths that come from national service are employable. Yeah? And therefore, we'll expand our space so that the youth that we put in the national service don't just get employment, they also get skills, and we are also able to feed the country. We are also able to give the good skills. We are also mm -hmm. able to, you know, do so many things. Also making sure that we also transform the other youths mm -hmm. so that we, are, we have a linkage between the national youth service and the youth outside. Okay. Yeah, the national youth service. Because mm -hmm. remember, the national youth service, we take a few, like 30,000 per year. But we have thousands and thousands of youth outside. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we have to get linkages. Millions, actually. Millions, yeah. Linkages between the national service through the Department of Youth Affairs yeah, in the Ministry of Youth, in the Department of Youth, to ensure that the other youths outside also catered for. Catered for, yes. Okay. Yeah. Let's now talk a bit, a bit uh, about, you know, funding at mm. NYS. Yes. How is the situation as of now, considering the changes that we saw? Uh, when I came in, of course, you know, and everybody knows that um, Parliament had um, slashed, the, slashed budget. the budget. Yeah. yeah. Up to now, we have not gotten that budget yet, but I'm hoping in the next financial year we are getting it back. Mm -hmm. uh, we have appealed to the Parliament. And uh, I'm very sure, especially the chairman of uh, our um, committee, um, uh, by committee on labor, uh, that is the uh, Honorable Wario, is really passionate about the national service mm -hmm. because they see these youths are the ones who are being punished. Mm. Because if slash that budget, what happens is that we cannot run our programs. No, the reasoning behind it was, you know, to just uh, sort of um, in an effort to starve corrupt institutions, exactly, exactly. Uh, you know, just to fight corruption. Now, mm. do you think it was a bit too harsh a move, considering, you know, those are problems of the past mm. that the youth are inheriting? Was it too harsh a move with that slash? Maybe, yes, it was, it was. Mm -hmm. What we needed is just to put in systems and uh, strengthen that organization, the organization, to ensure that that money that goes to National Youth Service does not... Um, is not misappropriated. Is not, yeah, again. exactly. Uh, because by you slashing, that means you're starving the, the servicemen, service women. Yeah? And that was a huge chunk. And it's a huge chunk. And I don't want to tell you my challenges because of that. Because <laughs> uh, we are working with the government, we are working with the parliament, yeah. we are working with the treasury to ensure that that challenge we are facing in the National Youth Service uh, is, is rectified mm -hmm. because it's, it's, it's really bad. It has impacted directly on the serviceman, serviceman. Mm -hmm. Yes, it has. Okay. It had, yeah. Wow. Mm. And what of the bills that you know that from the previous year, financial year, there was a bill that spilled forward. Was it one, right. one billion? The, uh, Around there. The, 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 there was some money that you're talking about pending bills? Yes. Yes. Um, the, 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 the government took that up and uh, there's a committee that mm -hmm. looked at it, the Penny Bills Committee, and uh, I think it's before uh, the, the CS, mm -hmm. our CS, and I think that it's going to be worked on so that we look at those bills. Are they genuine bills? Yeah. Uh, do they meet the criteria of payment? So I think with time we'll know because everybody's asking what happens to my pending bill. So they'll be paid. Mm -hmm. the In ones due that, time. The ones that are good, the ones that are correct, the ones that are genuine, yeah? Mm -hmm. The ones that have all the paperwork. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's no terror because, uh, this you know, we are dealing scenario. with the pending bills. Uh, those bills are funny. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the pending bills are a very tricky thing. The tricky thing. Especially mm -hmm. ones that you found yes, in place yes, already. Yes, But again, uh, for you to have a pending bill, that means um, you are working outside the budget. You see? Because uh, oh, yeah, the assumption the is, surplus, yeah. yeah, the assumption is you are given a budget that will run your programs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we want to know with these bills, well, how did they come? Okay. So if they were genuine bills, they will be paid. And they will definitely be paid? If they're genuine. If they're genuine. Yeah. Okay. So there's a committee that's looking at that. All right. How genuine they are, uh, whether they will be paid or not. Okay. So they'll be scrutinized. All right. One by one. With a tooth comb so that you check and make sure that you're not paying something that was never delivered mm -hmm. or you're paying for service that was never given. All right. Yeah. Now, you had mentioned now NYS is uh, more decentralized. Mm -hmm. Now, how is that in terms of working even with the county governments? How has that relationship been just gelling in the two? Uh, national Youth Service is a national, it's a national body. Yeah. Despite the fact that we are close, we are everywhere, 22 units, it still remains a national uh, uh, organization. organization. But what we do is that we work very closely with the county governments. Mm -hmm. If there are issues uh, that needs to be addressed, 
And we do that through the county commissioners because they represent the national government on the ground. So we, we gel in very well. And um, the decentralization does not mean we are decentralizing um, our services. Mm -hmm. We are only simply decentralizing um, the monies and uh, all those things. Oh. But the programs are still remain the national programs. Okay. They still remain national programs. All right. Yeah. Now, you once said that, you know, in the event that there will ever be an NYS3, mm -hmm. you would take full responsibility to Kupate Pale Langata. Mm -hmm. Will that actually, it, it will do you still, think it will happen? Uh, I hope. Uh, NYS3? Uh, NYS3, no. And you still stand by that statement? Yes, because who else will they take to Langata? It's <laughs> only me. I mean, because really, I'm the one at the helm, you know. Yeah. Um, that I said that knowing so well that uh, there are others who will want to work against, and therefore that's what I'm saying. I have to be alive to the fact that there are people who are hell bent mm -hmm. on doing things that are not right. You don't you rest easy. You at don't any rest point. easy. You don't sleep easy. You must make sure that your ears and your eyes are on the ground and just making sure that people are doing the right thing. Yeah. So that if you do something wrong, I know it is you. You know, the, in the past, things that went wrong, you could not pinpoint at some point. Where it happened, yeah. 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 Where the rain started yeah. beating Because the you know, you're set. You're set. You're set, really set. And then you end up signing things that you yourself are not so sure of. Yeah. But as before you sign, I'm not so, I'll ask you ten times, what is this? What is? How did it come about? You, you will not be the scapegoat. I don't want to be the scapegoat. Yeah. I don't want. Yeah. It would be very uh, ir ir irresponsible of me to yeah. be the, the DG and then I'm still blaming other people. Mm -hmm. Are you getting? Mm. You take full responsibility as a leader. As a leader. Yes, as a leader. So in the event that NYS3 is to ever happen, you have heard it straight from the DG herself to Tampata Langata, mm -hmm. but that is not bound to happen. No. As long as you're in office. No, 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 no. All right, now, yeah. so from matters aside, from, you know, being in office, now, you are a person in yourself. What, after a long day at work, mm -hmm. employees here and there, procurement, what do you do to just unwind and to just relax? I just love listening to music. What kind of music? Any good music. Gospel, uh -huh. um, Lingala, uh -huh. uh, R&B. Well, you yeah, you're an yeah, R&B person. Yeah, 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 I am. Yeah. yeah, I listen to this kind of music. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just love good music. Um, I also love cooking, mm -hmm. really. I really love cooking over weekends. And I'm happy when I see people eat uh, and enjoying my food. Yeah. I really like. Uh, and I'm hoping that when I retire, the next thing I'll go. I'll not. I'll retire from government, but I'll not retire from work. Mm -hmm. I'll start my own restaurant. Now you want to go into the yes, food, food industry. industry. Uh, actually, hospitality. I love when people enjoy what I do. Yeah. Yes. What's your favorite meal to prepare? <laughs> wow. Or you have a few? I have a few. Yeah. I, I can do. But then I do a lot of experiments on food, mm -hmm. and uh, they come out well. Chicken. I can do chapatis. Uh -huh. Yes, I'm a good cook. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Um, but overall, I just love listening to music. Mm -hmm. And I like, when I'm so tired, I just like going to bed and listening to music. That's what I do. It helps you relax. Yeah, it, it helps me relax. And how yeah. was it, uh, you know, just growing up and uh, your father was also a district officer? Yes. How, and a very strict one for that matter. Yeah, yeah, how yeah. was it growing up? Did you ever imagine you would follow in your father's path? Well. Or well, almost. Yeah, my father was a DO, mm -hmm. and uh, I remember I started admiring his work. Not him. <laughs> the work. <laughs> not even the work. There was yeah. a lady DO uh -huh. who was in that, uh, the Land Rover, yeah. written DO Winam. That is in Kisumu. Uh -huh. That time I was in Kisumu. I said, hey, I want to be a DO. Wow, this lady. <laughs> so I started admiring that work. But along the line, when I finished my, my high school, mm -hmm. I thought I would be a lawyer. But I didn't get the marks to be a lawyer, you know, in, in the campus then. Yeah, yeah they, you know, I was just short of one, one, one mark. So I ended up being a, a, a DO. And funny enough, when I went to campus now, because I didn't become a lawyer, mm -hmm. I did sociology. Mm -hmm. Which to me, yeah, which to me, and religious studies, which to me is a, a big plus for me because I, I realize it, it helps me, you know, um, navigate all these things. And I think that's what has made me even be successful yeah. because um, you deal a lot with people. Yeah. Uh, we deal with a lot with the um, with human mind and even the society. And therefore, you need certain skills. So as, as, as a young girl, I was ad I admired people in authority. I mm -hmm. think it's the authority I was admiring. Yeah, you I were admired. born alpha. <laughs> yeah. So after campus, um, yeah. I remember going to public service commission, uh, and then I was asked, "What do you want to become?" I said, "Anything." 
anything. And they look at anything is what? You know those days that you could either become a personnel, they were calling the personnel officers, administrator. They say, okay, go. So when I went, I became an assistant secretary. That's an administrator, of course. So that's how I became a deal. That's how you mm. started your journey? Yeah, that's how I started my journey. All right. Mm. You know, even as you go about your daily life, what are some of the values that you live by that help you, you know, navigate all the different spheres of your life from being a DG, mm. being a woman, being a mother? Mm -hmm. How? What are some of the values that you live by that help you stay diligent to yourself? First of all, I always remain true to myself. Mm -hmm. I like being honest. And uh, sometimes people find me a bit, a bit rude. A bit too honest? Yeah, maybe they call me rude. Because I'm honest, I'll tell you off. I mean, <laughs> if I think, <laughs> I, sometimes I don't f realize that I'm telling you off, I'm just telling you my mind. Mm -hmm. So I come across as a very rude person. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm a, not a very rude person. Uh, I, I like being uh, cautious sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and most of the times in the evening, I like just to wi unwind and pray and ask God to give me that, um, strength eh? to send his holy spirit to mm. guide me through my whatever i do so that it's it's good uh because i realize even as a woman it's difficult to be in any position whether leadership or whatever mm. it's very difficult even yourself where you seated here the men here will look at you and say this woman you know <laughs> and i'm alive to that fact but funny enough these uh, issues of women mm -hmm. uh started nagging me as a, an adult, not as a young lady. Mm. Because as a young lady, I think we were given equal opportunity. Yeah, My growing parents, up. Yeah, equal opportunity. So I didn't realize there's a problem with a man, You're woman. not alive to that no, fact. No, 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 I was not. Until now, I started working. It's when I realized you, you mean there's this gender issues. You see, mm. so it's a shock to me. First, I will, maybe the things that I went to girl school throughout. Mm. And there to us, we are all equal. Yeah. So you now you go outside uh, uh, the school, then you go to the... Oh, different the, reality. Yes, then the reality hits you that even if you're good, you're not good enough. And therefore, as a woman, um, I make sure I stay focused. And in back of my mind, I know I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. But it does not disturb me. It will not stop me from doing what I want to do. Because so what's the difference? You know, I keep asking myself, so what's the difference? So I strive to be good. I strive to do my work. But as I do my work, uh, I realize that you have to do extra. You have to go an extra mile. Yes, just yeah. to ensure that. Uh, but I don't care whether you second guess me, because yeah. I know I'm doing the right thing. In fact, most of the times I compare myself with the men, I say, I. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I think I've grown with that confidence yeah. from the one time I was a young girl. And maybe because of my upgrade, upgrade, upbringing, mm -hmm. uh, I was left when I was a, a young girl, a young kid. Six months, I was left with my parents, my grandparents. So my parents went to study, blah, blah, blah. When they came back, I was about five years or so. So now, I me, mean, I'm used to being the baby of the home. In fact, I used to be called baby. Mm -hmm. And then... <laughs> baby. <laughs> no, don't call me that. Used to be called. <laughs> <laughs> don't call me that. Uh, then uh, my parents come back and they start giving birth. We are nine of us. Then I'm wondering, I'm not a baby, this is Anymore. the babies and so on. So I, I, I realize I have to now start fighting for my space. Yeah. I mean, that's, when I look at it now, I realize that's why I'm a bit what I am. Yeah. Because now I have to fight for my space. When I was alone with my grandparents, I was the small one. There's nothing to fight for. Uh, but now that I am within this environment where we are nine children, I have to fight for my space. You see? So yeah. I, I think as I, grow, as I grow up, I usually fight for my space. Yes. You don't just bend to the will of no, others. No, 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 no. You have to fight for your space. And nobody how will give you easy. Nobody. Yeah, nobody. Nothing comes easy. In fact, that's why I keep telling ladies, just stay focused. Don't worry about what people say. Don't think about yourself as a woman. It's good to know that you're a woman, but that should not disturb you. It in fact, use you. it to your advantage. Yeah. Yes, use it to your advantage. Yes. Because people, when a woman does something, ah, she's doing something. Oh, she behaves like a man. What do you mean by um, you're behaving like a man? You're just being yourself. Really? Yeah, you're being yourself. Yeah. So it's quite interesting. Sometimes I sit down and laugh and wonder, what's wrong with the society? I, I, you know, they glorify a woman because she has done this and this. And it's good for us as women, take advantage of that. Yeah. Use that to your advantage. And use it to prepare yes, yourself. Yes, prepare yourself and also become a good example to the other women. Mm -hmm. You know this Queen B syndrome that mm. I'm up here where I am now. I don't want to say this. It's very wrong. Don't interrupt with the hive. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is very wrong because uh, 
uh, it it sounds very negative. Yeah. Uh, so, but even ourselves as women, we must make sure that um, we work hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we position ourselves to a place where you're known, you're seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're seen. Don't hide. Hiding means uh, not hiding, but just make sure your presence is felt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, you are in a very powerful office, and of course there are those who still uh, are negative to you. Mm -hmm. Now, I say all these negative things to you mm -hmm. based on the fact that maybe that you being just a woman in itself, mm -hmm. just as you have rightfully mm -hmm. put it, you know, mm -hmm. you're always constantly being compared, mm -hmm. being looked upon, mm -hmm. down upon, mm -hmm. people expecting you to mm -hmm. not do the right things. Mm -hmm. So how do you even deal with all these naysayers, especially with this, you know, internet generation, mm -hmm. social media, has connected everybody and mm, everyone mm, can have access mm. to anyone at any time uh, I just ignore them yeah that you ask me whether I have a Twitter handle I don't I think I have but I rarely even tweet yeah. but I have official Twitter handle for the office uh, simply because I don't want to see those negative things um, what you don't know does not hurt you yes yeah so continue speaking continue talking continue say whatever saying but what I do is that I make sure I just focus myself on mm -hmm. the right thing I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I know people are saying bad things and I don't care. So ignore so the long naysayers. As ignore, but just make sure you focus yourself and deliver on the target. Right. Deliver on what you've been given. Mm -hmm. Because if you start, you know, some people when they hear those negative things, you become discouraged. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it's human. You become discouraged. Uh, but I usually believe nobody says anything bad about me. Because I don't look at those things. I don't read them. Some people even send, even even some people send me through, through my, my SMS. Sometimes I look at it, I say, this are, you know, wamejisumbua sana hata kuandika hii kitu. Na hata sita wajibu. It hurts them more. Let it hurt them. Ignore not, them until they go them. away. Just ignore them. They write, they'll do whatever they want to do, but just ignore them. Because in your heart, and in my heart I know I'm doing the right thing, yeah. and I'm honest to myself. All right. Yeah. So as we wind down, maybe just what... As you, by the time you're done with your tenure in office, what do you want Matilda Sakwa to be remembered for? Wow. In NYS? In, in the world? In your leadership capacity, leadership even when you capacity. retire to your hospitality, uh, <laughs> to the hospitality <laughs> industry. Yes, yeah, so where I, when I'll be cooking for you, yeah, well. Yes. Um, I would wish and I, I hope I'll be remembered for one thing, mm -hmm. just a servant of the people. Mm -hmm. A lady who grew up, came to government, worked with the government to ensure that I've bettered the lives of people working around me and I've delivered on my targets. And the most important thing is that um, I'd want people to remember me for one thing, somebody who is honest mm. and who will deliver on any assignment given because I hate failure. I really it's hate not failure. An option. It's not an option. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that is what I, just somebody who works hard to succeed and to deliver on the targets and make sure that she does not fail and she does not let the women of this country down. Mm -hmm. And somebody who is a go getter, somebody who wants better and more than what she has, because that's the only thing that can make you alive. Because if you think you may fika, uja fika, like me, like, means uja fika. There's always room because for better. Because there's always room for uh, betterment, and there's always room to to improve. Yeah. Yes. And uh, one thing is that I'm a, a person who is open, who really would want to have good ideas, mm -hmm. not negative, good ideas that can build me. Yeah. Uh, and I learn from anybody, including my juniors. Yes. Yeah. All because right. my ultimate goal is to succeed, not to fail. So that's how I want to be remembered. All right. Yes, yeah. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you. Well, we have been speaking with Matilda Sakwa, the Director General of the National Youth Service. She has been in office for 10 months now, just checking into the 11th month. It will be a year very soon. So she has definitely done the best that she could in the time that she has been in office. And of course, she's hoping to do more, just basing on the fact that, you know, honesty will ultimately take you to places that you haven't been before. And it will help you not deal with unnecessary dramas. So just stay honest, a stage with the course, and you know, your journey will be worth the while. Now, we want to 